but we have slowed it down to show how this clock works and how the motion of it will affect the rate of ticking. You'll notice that the clock is ticking more slowly as I move it. Why is that? Well, the photon is making a zigzag path to reach one mirror and then the other. That's a longer path that the photon has to take. And that means that it takes more time to make that path. So the clock is slowing down. This is where physics and science fiction collide. Time for the moving clock runs slow. Although, if you travel with it like Bertrand, you are not aware of the change because everything happening on board, including the beating of your heart and the functioning of your brain, would slow down by the same amount. The faster Bertrand travels, the further the photon has to go between ticks and the slower time passes for him. What might be an hour for Bertrand could be a hundred years for the rest of us. He would, in effect, be traveling a hundred years into the future. Miss? Yes? What about travel to the past? Well, for a long time that was generally considered to be impossible. But then along came Professor Mallet. While jumping to the future is fairly easy, getting to the past is a different kettle of fish. And it's not just a question of physics. There are other reasons why such two-way time travel might not be possible or even desirable. At stake is nothing less than what it means to be a human being. On the face of it, traveling to the past is preposterous. Bob Gale, who co-wrote Back to the Future, the most successful time travel movie ever made, is well aware of the problems. If time travel were possible, then theoretically I could go back and visit my grandfather when he was a boy. Well, let's say I accidentally kill him. Then he doesn't grow up to get married and have my father. I don't get born. So the question is, if I don't get born, who was it that went back in time and accidentally killed my grandfather? It didn't happen, but it did happen, which is called a paradox. No matter what Ron Mallette thinks is possible within the laws of physics, it's long been thought that time travel must be impossible because of the paradoxes it would cause. Suppose that Simon Wells, the great-grandson of H.G. Wells, becomes fascinated by the idea of time travel after reading his ancestor's book and decides to travel back in time to 1894, just as H.G. Wells is trying to come up with the idea for his new novel. Let's say Simon tries to kill his great-grandfather to test the paradox. If you think about it, it must be impossible for me to go back and kill my great-grandfather because we all know it didn't happen. He lived to a ripe old age, he wrote hundreds of books, and I was born. So, in the world that we live in, I can't change the past, even if I could travel in time. Something must go wrong. For example, the gun misfires. For we know, as a matter of fact, that the murder attempt failed. So does that mean that time travel must be impossible? Well, not necessarily. For as long as Simon Wells fails to kill H.G., there is no inconsistency and no paradox. There is nothing to stop a time traveler taking part in history, as long as the results of those actions agree with what we know to have happened. Let's suppose Simon Wells is caught by the police and is thrown in prison for attempted murder. His perplexed great-grandfather comes to the jail to find out who it was that wanted to kill him. Simon tells him the whole story about how he reads the as-yet unwritten book 
and travels back in time in an attempt to disprove the paradox. Of course, all is forgiven and Simon is led out of prison. But the intriguing possibility is that Simon Wells could, without paradox, have been the original inspiration for the book of the time machine, the book that started the whole thing off in the first place. He could, in effect, have played a role in the past. This principle means that even today we could see the results of time travel that has yet to be invented. Consider Leonardo da Vinci, the famous 15th century artist. Hundreds of years ago, he drew detailed plans for machines that are suspiciously ahead of their time. Could a time traveler have whispered in Leonardo's ear? Even if that happened, or is yet to happen, say a time traveler in 500 years goes back and meets Leonardo da Vinci, we're already seeing the proof of it today. It's in museums all around the world. So while it may be possible to contribute to history, to have helped it to happen, what does not seem possible is to go back and change the past, a restriction that has dire consequences for all of us. If Ron Millet manages to build a time machine, the implications are so far-reaching, it's almost inconceivable. Take the great-grandfather paradox. I can't kill my great-grandfather, even if I intend to. So whatever my intentions are, things will happen to stop me achieving them. Therefore, perhaps, I really have no free will and everything is predestined. A time traveller could go into the future and then come back knowing exactly what the future holds for each and every one of us. From birth to death, our lives would then be predestined, just as certain as history. We would have lost the concept of responsibility for our actions, with potentially appalling consequences for society. Thankfully, some believe that science itself offers a way out of this unpleasant prospect. Free will is pretty fundamental to our philosophical conception of ourselves as people. But it turns out that free will and time travel are not inconsistent with each other. But to understand why, we have to investigate some pretty strange features of reality. Influential physicist and writer Professor David Deutsch is the world's leading proponent of something called parallel universe theory. The theory is that, in addition to the universe we see around us, there are vast numbers of other parallel universes. Some of them are very like our own, differing perhaps only in the position of one atom. And others are very different. For instance, there are universes in which I'm sitting at home watching TV now, and you're being interviewed about parallel universes. This bizarre idea comes from the study of subatomic particles which, when put to work inside a computer, for example, display behavior that is nigh on absurd. Explaining why might save us from a future that is fixed. If you look at the universe on a very small scale, you begin to see things that are very alien to our everyday experience. Um, in everyday life, um, we're used to objects retaining their identity as they move along. This pen stays a pen as it moves. Um, a subatomic particle typically might change into another particle or into two other particles, or particles might merge their identity and become one. Imagine that our universe is like a pool table. Usually the balls follow the familiar laws of physics to the letter, laws that were laid down by Sir Isaac Newton over 300 years ago. But if the game were shrunk down to the subatomic scale, strange things would start to happen. Sometimes a subatomic particle can be traveling along and then change course for no reason that we can observe. Or, if this was the subatomic world, we could 
put an object on the table and it could ooze right through and fall to the floor.